Okay. All right. That's okay. Today we are going to work on this um, first look of uh, neural network as for with <coughs> using Keras. I use uh, this guy of uh, Francois Chole. He wrote the book. Um, I think he works with Google, uh, part of the Google brain, and he is the author of um, um, Keras. He's on Twitter. You can follow him on on Twitter, which I also kind of follow him. He's kind of an artist, so this is the guy. So yeah, this is the the book that I have and it's also available on github basically so keras is a framework for specifically designed for uh, deep learning um as probably uh, this is like totally new for you guys uh, then you have to listen to my probably my other wait do i have do i have my other anyway deep learning is part of the uh <laughs> machine learning and machine learning is part of the artificial intelligence it's basically about automating <coughs> software automation <coughs> it's basically any uh it's like software development or software coding but uh, there's a major difference in the uh, traditional software um well um the, the person is the one who instructing the computer what to do while in the artificial intelligence or i think specifically in machine learning and deep learning the uh instead of the human in is the one who um uh, uh making uh step by step instructions is actually the machine itself is actually kind of like uh uh instructing the the the, the machines what to do that's why it's called machine learning it's the 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 learner is the machines um, is learning um, uh, via data. So in the uh, deep learning or machine learning world, we the human is uh, basically uh, acts as a teacher. So we giving a lot of uh, data or information. Right. And, uh, um, and a, a label. So, for example, if you want to machine to identify cats, you give them a picture of a cat, lots of them probably like 1 million there's a caveat on that but um, so for now just just take it as is first just take a lot of data a cat and you tell them that this is a cat this is a cat and then you tell them probably a picture of a non cat this is not a cat and the machine will figure out <clears throat> will sort of <clears throat> write the instruction by basically adjusting the parameters of the functions uh, basically so that's what uh, in short what is uh, deep learning and machine learning is all about basically it's a totally uh, different um, paradigm um, it's like the opposite way of uh, traditional software so if you uh, heard about software 2.0 that's what basically is because uh, it's, it's like the new version to write a software it's not software 1.0 is which is the traditional one software 2.0 is the the reverse to machine learning deep learning so um yeah so anyway <coughs> where am i okay so if you go to um the github you can uh, follow him francois chole and then you can uh, basically get some of the um, um for free um right let me see where is that so this one deep learning with python notebooks right so you can go through this exercise so right now we are just going to go through um chapter two right a first look at the neural network so um it's good that if you have the book because you can, I think, uh, deep uh, dive uh, a 
better uh, especially some of the things that probably uh, you need more clarifications uh, but uh, on the GitHub itself I think it's, it's, it's pretty pretty good for, and it's free um, but there, there are some things that are missing because uh, on the GitHub itself it's just basically uh, more on the exercises which is I think it's more important right um, but if you can get the book get the book I already got a book I somehow I lost it I don't know where I put it anyway so we are we are looking at <clears throat> chapter two um, my my plan is just to go through all of this until chapter eight okay um, hopefully within like I don't know two or three months right it's part of the uh, hundred days of machine learning uh, code uh, on Twitter okay so as I said, uh, it's using Keras. Keras is a is a framework built on top of the uh, TensorFlow. TensorFlow is another framework that's uh, specifically um, uh, it's an open source framework uh, developed by Google. It's uh, for um, learn deep learning, but uh, it's kind of like uh, not so easy to to learn. So Keras will abstract some of those. Um, the glitches or the friction so so to speak right so it's it's much more like easier uh for us to learn is is that sort of like if you think about it like um um you know uh kind of apple smartphone you know you just make it so easy so intuitive intuitive right so our brain doesn't have to work that hard hopefully all right so <clears throat> the first one so we want to import caress um right and then Keras uh, uh, dot version here. So this one uh, I'm using um, uh, Google Colab. Yeah. So you can just do it for free. So if you haven't uh, not familiar with Col Google Colab, just just uh, uh, tap this Colab dot research dot Google dot com here, yeah? and just press enter. Uh, you need to have a, I think a Gmail account. Sorry. Is a Google uh, services, but it's it's free, right? So once once you uh, log in, right, and then you can go to GitHub, right? Go to GitHub and then you enter the the URL here, which is this URL. So you click, you wanna work on. Uh, we are working on this chapter two. You click on chapter two, right, and then you have all of these things. In, yeah. All right. Wait. Hold on. Not this one. You have to click the uh, this one. The uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, this one. So, and then you have all of this uh, right um, uh, URL link. The GitHub.com slash fsholle slash deep slash learning slash wit slash python slash notebooks slash blob slash master blah 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 right so you can you can just like copy and paste right copy and then you paste it you click on github you just paste it here right and then you just press enter <clears throat> and then it should give you all of the uh, the lists of the available in that particular branch so this one is is looking at the repository of actually slash deep learning with Python notebooks so it gives you all of the basically the nice uh, list of chapters right so we uh, we are just opening uh, gonna use this one the first time so you just click on that and then once you click on that it will give you this okay and then um, you want to make it like more concise right so you just want to make sure the runtime is um, on a GPU using Python 3 uh, you want to use GPU so it's faster when during the training um, we'll, we'll get to it later what, what is training uh, basically it has to do with the data remember uh, that deep learning is using uh, data uh, for in order for the computer to learn right so we need to train kind of in quote train the machine train the computer okay so um, okay, all right. So uh, to execute is if this is the first time you use a J Jupyter notebook, right? Uh, to to uh, 
to 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 run the code you can click this yeah play yeah but i would prefer uh, clicking shift enter as as is better right so it's using 2.1.6 right now this is uh, october 30 2018 so <clears throat> okay where are a first look at the neural network okay so um this is chapter two blah 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 yeah if you want to know more you have to get the books um but i think you'll you 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 can get by without the books i, I don't know well, you'll, you'll, you'll see okay so basically we are trying to uh concrete an example of neural network using python library crash to learn to classify handwritten digits okay so we want the machine or the computer to learn how to in code write step by step instruction actually it's not writing instruction because it's what is basically doing what is basically the computer is learning is basically adjusting or or learning all the parameters right if you remember your um high school um high school uh let's see okay let's go here if you remember your high school uh, can you see this if you remember your high school uh al linear um uh, not linear linear function the the tangent the y equals to mx plus b right this is a function right is a linear one why linear because basically if you uh, plot it at the graph at the what x y uh, cartesian right depending on what's the value of m let's say you put let's say this one is 2 and the value of b is 3 right so this is y equals to 2x plus b 3 right so basically if you put let's say uh, x y let's say zero um, this become three right if one where is that where is one one times two is two two times three is five right and then um, if it's two two times two four and then seven so if you if you plot it in the chart uh, I'm just approximating here Okay. Uh, hopefully you can see it really clear. Okay, maybe make it closer. Like that, better. Okay, is that better? Okay. So let's say one, two, three. Right. <coughs> okay. Probably that's better. Okay, and then this one one. This is, uh, yeah, so to learn about deep learning, uh, don't worry about what other people said that you need a PhD degree or even a master degree. I, I, I happen to have a master degree, but please, I'm not, I'm not a genius, okay? My career is just average, okay? Um, all you need is just high school and some common sense, okay? Unless, you know, if you're, um, if you have common sense then you you can do this so don't believe that um that those people that said you need a psc degree to do this um uh if you have a psc degree it's going to be a different level of deep learning then probably it's going to be more like a uh you know like a, a deeper level kind of deep learning but if you want you just to, to be practical to use it right to implement it in the real world to solve uh, real world problems i don't think you need the deep learning right but if you want to to change like really like a deep dive uh, the underlying structure then you might need a, a psc degree right so it's, it's just like a deep learning set is like a tool right tool is like it's like you're driving a car now i'm asking you do you need to know how the engine works no right uh, you just need how to drive. Yeah? So, uh, some somebody will teach you how to drive. To uh, what, what is drive neutral park, right? 
to brake and all that stuff to stop, right? That's it. You do not need to know how the engine works, right? You just need to operate the car, drive safely. That's it. So, so if you're, uh, it depends on your objective. If you want to like make a different kind of car, you know, change like uh, make a faster car, or probably make a, a fundamentally kind of a, a different kind of engine. Then probably you need a BST degree because you need the underlying, uh, the understand really the nitty gritty of the engine, right? But if you just want to use it, solve the problem. I want, hey, I want to go to Target, so I'll drive a car. I don't need to know like, hey, what is the engine? How many like uh, spark plugs? What's this? The miles per gallon? Yeah, I don't need to know all of those details, right? All I need to do is just open the car, start the engine, and drive it. The same thing as here in deep learning, right? So. Um, so depend on your objective, right? So here, so going back to the, because we're, we're talking about the, uh, um, uh, different approach of software, uh, programming, right? Because in, in deep learning, basically you are, um, optimizing this function and you are basically, remember machine learning is basically, uh, we are, <clears throat> The computer is the one who's writing the code, but actually it's not writing a code. Actually, it's, it's, it's finding these parameters, this M and B. But this is a simple function. So in deep learning or in machine learning, it's basically you're, you're given a function or you're choosing a function. And, and choosing a function itself, it's kind of a... Uh, uh, has a dis discipline on its own and can be a whole topic on its own, right? But take it as is now. Just imagine the function is uh, is, is simple. Yeah, it's uh, from the linear function, right? So if you uh, let's say if you if you if you chart this into the into the into the graph, then you you would you would see if it's zero and then three, right over here. And if it's x is one, is five. So it's going to be probably somewhere here, here, right? And then if it's f x is two, is seven. So uh, we somewhere here, right? So if you draw the function, it's going to be something like this probably, right? So this is like the uh, the line, right? So what, and you can see the line is a line, is a line. That's why we call it a linear function because it's basically, literally, literally, it's drawing a line, right? It's not drawing a circle, it's not drawing a curve, right? Although in a in a deep learning uh, uh, a function, basically, uh, in deep learning. The function is not a line. The function is is it's it's basically a, is a multi-dimensional function. Yeah, it's there's so many dimensions. Uh, in, in in fact, they call it is a universal approximation function. This is what's so cool about uh, deep learning as compared to the um, uh, machine learning because uh, remember if you have uh, AI here, right? uh, let me see. Uh, can, you, can you see it? If you have AI, this is AI, right? And then there is a machine learning here, ML is inside here, and then deep learning is a subset here, right? Can you see it? Okay, there you go. Okay, so if this is like a ball, so this is the AI, the world of AI, and this is the world of ML, and this is the world of deep learning, right? So it's a subset, right? So if you look at the functions that are in ML, um, they are not, it's not universal, the function. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's more like specific, right? It's more specific. Right, so if you heard, uh, probably if you heard about XGBoost, 
uh, random forest, uh, decision tree, they call it DT, yeah? um, uh, also linear function, they can use a linear function or even logistic regression, they call it logistic regression basically. It's almost similar with um, linear function, but they kind of like, uh, they, they squash it using another function like a sigmoid, I think. I think, if I'm not mistaken, right? So this is, this is for classification. Well, linear is for predicting like uh, what is, is, because it's linear, because so given, given an input, what is the likely output? It's more like a, you can use it for time series, you know, uh, probably like stock forecasting, uh, probably like a, to predict also like a sales, uh, to, predict, to predict like the, the house, uh, the price of the house, given like a square feet, like, like 2,000 square feet, you can have like say 100,000. What if it's like 150,000 square feet? Would it be like 150,000 or 280,000? So it's like, it's like a, it's, it's not, it's not, you cannot classify it, but it's more like a linear, right? Um, so remember this deep learning is basically to predict, to predict what be uh, the uh, likely outcome. Um, it could be, uh, you can classify it, the prediction, whether it's what kind of cat, what kind of dog, uh, whether it's an animal, whether it's a person, right? Uh, basically to make decisions, uh, but it's the decision is based on the historical data, right? And why we said historical data? Because we are supplying the data. Remember, we are acting as a teacher. So, so we, the human, we are have to gather a lot of data, right? So that's why like a uh, com big company like Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, like, and then the Chinese company like Tencent, uh, Baidu, uh, uh, Alibaba, they get a lot of data, right? A lot of data. Um, and and those data uh, uh, from Google's point of view, Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook point of view is very useful because they can they can use it to train their the computer to train the uh, the functions or to, to train the universal approximation function, which is deep learning, right? And once once they train it, they can deploy it in the real world, and and then basically kind of like predict kind of almost anything like who's gonna win the like the football, who's like what's the stock price is gonna be like two years from now, what uh, uh, what is the car in a self driving car probably what is the car should do in a in 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 in, in a given situation should it stop, accelerate, brake, or you know do what kind of decisions right so it's about making decisions and these big companies are in a very good uh, position to to take advantage of that because they get all the data and and this universal approximation, approximation functions um basically is a data hungry right because that's the way it learns at, at least in a deep learning world um and and in the supervised uh, learning, because there are, uh, I think, three types of learning, supervised, unsupervised, and I think reinforcement, right? So supervised meaning you need to give label. You need to, to tell the computer, like, this is a cat, or this is a dog. This is a picking this cat, or, or sorry, picking this dog. This is a, 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 you know, Siamese cat. This is a, a labradoodle dog, you know? So you have to tell the computer what are the labels. But unsupervised, there's no label. Anyway, we're we are off tangent here. So anyway, um, so we're going back again to the linear function, right? <laughs> so basically, it's a line, right? And once you change the uh, the the variable, right, the m and the b, and the line will 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 either. So the m here, when you change, let's say from two to five or two to like minus two the it will change and remember this is this is a tangent right right tangent which is uh, basically uh, y over x right so it will basically 
it will move it like this right once you one when you, once you change the tangent and once you change the p it will shift it it will shift it to the left or to the right 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 so in in a deep learning or in a machine learning world, world uh, basically when we say that what uh, the machine is learning basically the machine is learning these parameters what are the m and b so that the data that we supply right the data that we supply the historical data that we supply is best fit into the line right so for example <coughs> If I have, um, so for example, if I have a, right, a historical data, right? Let's say if you trying to predict, let's say the home price, yeah, based on let's say the x is this square feet, right? And then the y is the price, right? You're trying to predict the price. And then you're given a historical data, right? The square feet, let's say there's, I don't know. And then, and then like, let's see, 1,000, 2,000 square feet, 3,000, 4,000, right? 5,000, right? Um, and then this is right, the prices, right? Let's say, I don't know. 100,000 100, 100, in, in, in thousand dollars, 200,000 and so on, right? And then based on the historical data you got, you know, you got from your realtor or from, from a website, yeah? So you have one of your best friends is a realtor, uh, she gave you or he gave you a, like a historical data and then you can plot a chart, you know, for example. And some, some houses like that like that right so now uh, what machine learning is basically early, uh, the the simplest of machine learning and basically when you when you study deep learning actually the 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 the, the, the neuron uh, uh, one of the deep, lear deep learning um, method is using a neural network the the neurons which is basically inspired by the human brain right the neurons, which is uh, this is like a neuron, and there is a synapses is another neuron. The neuron itself is a is a linear function. The simplest of the neuron, which is basically m x plus b, right? And this is the this is the x, and this is the y, right? That's that is the neuron. So going back to here, so again, so first we have, we're trying to fit in the line, right? Let's say we're using a simple linear regression again. So what is the M? We still don't know, right? What is the B? We still don't know. So the machine will figure out, and this is where the magic is, basically the, because it will figure out kind of on its own using, using a various technique in deep learning is uh, basically, um, but uh, the intuition is like this so you you give a like a random you just guess kind of you know randomly initialize guess let's so say you put you put a number just guess four and three right and then it will draw uh, it will draw a line boom and then after you draw a line it will compute all the error the error right by comparing the comparing the the actual right the actual historical data to that line right to that line which is basically uh, the actual and to the uh, uh, prediction right and you got error you got some error right so the actual minus you compare it with the prediction the prediction is basically the the first line the first line that you throw on the board by just randomly initialize the parameters the parameters in this case is just m and b just two right for a simple linear regression right and then you just compute the the actual which is the historical data point and the prediction the prediction is the line that you made 
based on the ran randomly initialized parameters. And then you got the error, right? Actual minus prediction. And once you got the error, um, there's a technique basically um, called uh, back prop propagation or gradient descent, basically how to minimize this error, right? So you compute the error and then you got, let's say, x, right? And then you want to minimize this. You want to minimize the x, right? So how do you do that? Is uh, if you remember a uh, differential equation, otherwise, don't worry about that. It's basically uh, um, just how to minimize the error, basically. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to dig dive into it, it's basically you you um, you sort of like uh, um, like uh, uh, test uh, 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 what is the likely uh, likely uh, output given uh, a slightly increase in the input because you already know um, given the uh, the first parameters the first uh, randomly instance parameters what would be the, what is the output right the first output and then you want to increase slightly increase slightly adjust the parameters either going up or going down and then you want to know like what is the output if the output output is gonna decrease okay that's good we'll we'll use that one we, we use that slightly adjustment which is probably going up but if uh, you are just slightly going up the output is uh, instead of decreasing it's it's increasing then you want to go the opposite oh that means it's wrong. That means I have to like adjust it the opposite way. So I have to decrease the parameter, right? So basically, you want to minimize the error. And the the best technique to do this is uh, gradient descent, right? It's using a derivative, uh, basically a rule chain deriv derivative, basically. It's basically to know how sensitive it is by slightly adjustment of the uh, parameters to the output. That's that's pretty good, intuitively. Um, okay, uh, in this case, you just have to trust the algorithm. It works. Okay, uh, using gradient descent is basically a derivative, uh, chain rule derivative. Um, so, so the the so that's the the algorithm, and the algorithm will compute that, and then will uh, uh, will will decrease the error. Uh, uh, less and less until you got you are kind of satisfied with the error and then okay and then so so the the line will go from like say from like this and it will go here and then we'll compute the error again oh no it's too too big oh let's go back here and then it will it will make a line until the line is like adjusted it has to minimize uh, error and then you're satisfied with that line and then you know what is the m what is the b okay and that's how the, the the final parameter is already learned kind of that's how ac actually the computer is is uh, uh, writing a step by step instruction it's, it's not actually a step by step instruction just like when the human uh, write a traditional code but it's more uh, keep on readjusting the parameters until satisfy the condition that we want right until basically minimize the error yeah, right? so okay Oh, that's that was a long one. <laughs> okay, let's let's go back here. <clears throat> okay, so we have classified the handwritten digits. Um, and it's a grayscale image images, right? Twenty eight by twenty eight pixels into uh, ten categories. 0 to 9. The data set we will use is the MNIST uh, data set. Okay. It's a classic data set in the machine learning community which has been around for almost... Uh, I just want to make sure it's... Okay. Okay. Good. Still good. As long as the fit itself has been very intensively studied. It's a set of 60,000 training imag images so it's quite a lot. Plus, <clears throat> I want to know how long has this been. 
uh, how long is this? 35 minutes? Oh my gosh, it's long. Uh, sorry guys, I'm gonna drink first. Hmm. So, um, so Amnes is a data images has 60,000 and 10,000 uh, test images. Um, so we want to classify a grayscale images. So it's not even color; it's just grayscale images of handwritten digits, right? Zero to nine. Um, it's like the hello world of the deep learning, All right? Okay. Okay. So what what are we what are we um, dealing here? We are trying to classify oh, handwritten digits, right? So uh, the data is from MNIST, right? Remember, deep learning is about uh, learning from uh, data, historical data. He has 60,000 uh, training data, right? And then he has 10,000 test data, right? Uh, it's trying to classify 0 to 9, right? Handwritten. Oh, basically, um, if you want to be really good in deep learning and machine learning, um, the key is not just to like to know like what algorithm to use, um, especially even in deep learning, because deep learning, if it's just uh, a neural network, you kind of just use one kind of algorithm. Basically, it's the neural network algorithm, right? Basically, which is inspired by the brain, right? But if you're into machine learning, then you have to worry, okay, uh, should I choose XGBoost? Should I choose decision tree? Should I choose like a, a random boost? Should I choose like a, I don't know, random forest, uh, blah, 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 you know, it's because there's so many algorithms. But in deep learning, because it's a universal approximation function, you don't have to worry any, any of, about that, right? So uh, it's kind of nice, right? Um, because now you don't have to worry like what function should you use you just because it's universal it can solve anything right uh by the way if I, I got a chance i i will discuss that why 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 is it universal that that itself is a is an interesting topic uh but i re recommend you uh go to michael nielsen uh uh deep learning uh, page he he has a really really good uh, explanation how to why why a deep learning or neural network is a universal approximation function. So anyway, so going back to so handwritten um, and it's grayscale, right? And it's only twenty eight by twenty eight pixels. Okay. 28 by 28. So if you if you are new to totally like new to um, pixels or image computer image, right? So what you see in your computer is basically a bunch of pixels. So for example, if you see a, I don't know a letter H, right? Handwritten, let's say handwritten, right? Say a big one like that. Like that, yeah. So all of this, if it's you say like uh, this, this is twenty-eight by twenty-eight. So there's gonna be like twenty-eight of those. But I'm not, I'm not gonna throw twenty-eight. It's too complicated. Let's say, let's say just probably like ten, right, or whatever, right. So, so this is this is like this is like the pixel. Right, so every 
every image, every whatever you see on the screen on a computer is generated by this individual pixels, right? And then they kind of like punch it up together and then it creates an image, right? That's amazing. Um, of course, the, the, the higher the number of pixels in given a, given a, a, a square or a specific, uh, you know, it's the more, the better, the more refined it is, right? So in this case, we have 28 here. So it's a square and 28 here. And each of this pixel basically um, um, is representing uh, by a number, basically from 0 to 255, right? Uh, 0 is the darkest, I think. So it's black, totally pitch black, right? If your computer can render that. And then 255 is, is totally white. Like really, really white. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. So, okay. Let's let's go back to the. Uh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, so now we are going to just run the code. All right. <clears throat> I hope I give you just uh, enough background. Okay, so the amnes data comes uh, preloaded in Keras, okay, in the form of a set of four NumPy arrays. Okay, NumPy is just a name for um, another framework. Okay, if if once once you notice in, in a if you get into uh, this deep learning, there's so many frameworks, but uh, the most popular one is the NumPy, and I think Panda. I think if you're more into uh, data science instead of deep learning, but NumPy is basically um, uh, 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 you can say another not programming language. It's just a framework. It's it's built on top of another of Python uh, programming language. It's a, a, a framework to make it easier. A fr what is a framework? A framework is a you can say a, you can say a, pr a programming language or whatever which is built on top of another programming language just to make it easier for people to to write codes so instead of you writing it using like four different co four codes you can just write it into one so you can say it is a is a uh in other words a higher level of abstractions or you can say it's a, an uh an automation right so uh so instead of uh, writing like four steps you just write one step and within that one step it means you are doing four step so it's kind of like a a faster way but it's the the more the more you do that the more uh, uh kind of uh framework a lot that you use is is the, i think it's the easier the more intuitive not always okay but i think it's in general, I would say it's more intuitive for human brain to understand because it's, it's kind of almost rich to our understanding of a brain level instead sort of like really, really technical level, right? Um, so NumPy is just one of those frameworks basically uh, optimized to compute arrays. Arrays, what is array? Array is just a list of numbers, you know? You, uh, well, it's not just numbers. It could be text. It could be numbers. It's just a list of things, so to speak, right? Um, what is a list? A list is basically not just one. You put more than one, like 10 different things, like 10 different texts or 10 different numbers, like from 1 to 10, you put it into a, into a bracket, into a list. That's what it is. So... <clears throat> And one, one thing that you'll hear a lot uh, in deep learning uh, is the linear algebra. Linear algebra is basically uh, trying to compute uh, a list of numbers in such a way that um, it's fast. That's all you have to know. You know. Just make it fast and make it efficient, make it like kind of easy. The technique to do it, the, 
what is the technique called? It's called linear algebra. That's okay. Yeah, okay. So we're going to run this. Uh, so from keras.datasets, import MNIST. So we are importing basically the MNIST um, um, data, which is, consists of 60,000 training images and 10,000 uh, test data, right? And it's from the Keras data set. And then we are going to, uh, I hope some of you already know a little bit of Python, but if not, don't worry, I'll just translate. So this, what this code is doing is basically uh, going to MNIST, because I'm an MNIST in an object, if you know a little bit Python, but okay. And then going to the load data, load data is a function, or a, yeah, it's a function or is a, uh, I forgot the word. Okay, anyway. So loading the data that is inside, inside the MNIST. And then uh, once you load the data, you want to put, because the data basically has 60,000 training and 10,000 tests, right? So once you load the data, I want, I want the computer to put the data, the training data, to put it into two categories. Right, or divided into two categories. One is the train images, right, and then the other one is the label, which is the remember. Uh, this is uh, one of the branch of deep learning. Sorry, guys, there's so many things that I'm throwing at you, but uh, this this term is going to be like over and over again, right? It's it's supervised learning, meaning there is a label, there's an output. You just Remember, deep learning is you are acting like a teacher. You're given a data, fit into your student. The student is your computer, right? But you're not just feeding data. You also tell the student, hey, this picture is a cat. Hey, this handwritten digit is one. Hey, this handwritten digit is two. Hey, this handwritten digit is three. It's like a teacher, you know, you're like teaching kindergarten, right? You're telling one, two, three, right? You don't, you don't just show and then you don't do nothing. That's if you don't, if you don't, if you just keep your mouth shut like that, and you just show it. That's called unsupervised. You, because you don't give the answer. Once you give the answer, five, dog, packing this dog, shammy scam, crazy person. Oh no. So once you you give it a label or an, or an answer to that data, then it's called supervised learning. Just remember that. Okay. So. We are doing supervised learning here. And many, 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 probably like almost, I don't know, I, I might be wrong, but so far I know the, 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 the one that rules the world right now is the supervised learning. The one that's being talked about, being like hype, including the self-driving cars, including the, uh, the Facebook is doing, the Google is doing, right? Uh, if you know, if you use uh, Android phone, Google Photos, like it can recognize like, uh, what kind of object they are, they're all, almost all I see is using supervised learning, probably like more than 90%. I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least that's my impression is, every time I heard about deep learning is always the data and the label. The data and the label. It's never just been just the data, no label. So the teacher has to say something, right? Just remember that the teacher has to say something. You don't, you don't become a teacher just just showing things, and then you just keep quiet, right? You're just showing things. You'll get fired, right? You'll get fired, or or your your students will just oh, what is that, right? But 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 the interesting thing in the real world, we we learn a lot without data as a human being you know our brain we cannot just like when our kid you know we just look well, probably when you when you're young or when you're like just like even now i'm i'm, I'm an adult right but still i'll just i'll just observe and see what people are doing or what's in front of my eye and then i don't understand it i've just absorbed it right I do not know what it is straight away, but 
probably after like observing it for a long time hey it kind of makes sense oh i oh this is this is probably belongs here this is belongs here oh this is you you kind of get the intuition what what the image is in front of you is trying to tell you right without even somebody's yelling or sh saying to you hey the images in front of you is somebody is trying to do this or is this or is that or whatever right so okay <clears throat> so we're gonna execute this i'm sorry i just talk a lot but you know i'm just giving you a lot of backgrounds here um i hope you still stay with me so right now what you're doing um downloading the data <coughs> apparently it's from amazon okay so <coughs> one small tip how do you know it's already been downloaded it it gives you the number so it is number two right right over there so once you execute uh, shift enter that one is still waiting right once it's done give you the, the the subsequent number which is now number three okay so we we got it so now we want to see <coughs> like memory is very important to understand your data be, even before you run the data right because that's basically the one of the core the a lot of work in i think in machine learning and deep learning when you are hired by a company or you're doing things on your own or your freelancing job is going to be much more understanding the data right instead of just running running the algorithm itself that that itself i think is probably the easiest one understanding the data formatting the data pre-processing that's going to be more a lot of i think bulk of the work is going to be there okay so now we want to see like uh the ship all right so we run that it's 28 by 28 so remember the the pixel earlier so it's 28 by 28 pixel right so that's the train images right the train label should be also the same 60,000 right if you want to see what are the train labels so basically a bunch of array right array is a list of numbers or a list of things can be numbers could be in uh, object could be uh, text in this in this case is an integer type 8 the data type here okay but all you have to know right now is between 0 to 9 remember it's try to classify or it's trying to uh, the label is trying to uh, it's giving the answer whether is it, it is zero is it number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven eight nine okay Whew. and the ship the ship is none because it's just one pixel it's just like it's not it's not even a pixel it's just a number well it's, it's it, it, there's no ship because it's it, it, it it's not it's not it's not it's a label it's not a it's not something that you can see on the screen it's not something that you see on the computer right it's it's a it's a tax or it's a it's a number so it doesn't have a ship got it so the one that has a ship is is you can see it's it's an image that one has a ship because it is an image it's basically a compilation of a pixels right but if it's a tax or a number it's not a compilation of pixels it's just it's just number uh, represented by by uh, by uh, by zeros or ones right but it's not represented by pixels okay so it doesn't match it doesn't have a ship right? ship doesn't doesn't belong in a in a in a tax world or in a number world okay um, okay so now we're going to the test images so remember we have 10,000 so some of you probably may ask why do you need why do you need a test well don't you want to know like how good is your like uh, remember uh, deep learning is about uh, 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 
making a function, making a universal approximation functions that can be applied to anything, right? Self-driving cars or recognizing cats, recognizing dogs, recognizing people who are playing cricket, recognizing people who are playing uh, who are hungry, recognizing people who are sad, right? So it's about and also about making decisions whether the the the, the, the car has to turn right or turn, turn left, it has to brake, has to stop, has to go forward or go backward, and so on, right? How many degrees has to turn left? How many degrees has to turn right? Right? So, uh, so if if that's the case, then you you want if especially if you want to deploy it in the real world, right? Then you not you need to know how good they are, right? You you cannot just train it and then just like just like when if you're a teacher right if you're teaching in a class right and then you have like a 20 students you give them a lot of data one two like two times two four three times two five what happens if you see an lion run what happens if you see a cat hug right you give a lot of training to your student what happens if you see a fire what happens if you see somebody with a gun get out the, uh, what happens if you hear a bell what happens if you hear an emergency bell get out of the classroom dark and so on so once you train it you have to know you want to know how good is your students uh, absorbing those data that you've been teaching them right you don't want to like your energy put to waste okay right so you have to test it of course right before you even deploy it in the real world because you even you send your students to the real world your student is like your 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 universal approximation functions, right? If 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 they are not ready to the world, probably then you have to go back and train them again. I don't know, or probably you can just kill them. No, I'm just I'm just joking, right? That means it's probably it's a bad student. It's, it's not it's not a universal approximation function. Probably you need to change the function. Okay, um, I'm just off tangent here. That's that's just a joke. Okay. Um, if you do not know that's that's not a joke then i do not know um anyway so so you need to test it right so you have to know like indication like how good they are right oh so so this is uh, the test images we have ten thousand. the shape is supposed to be the same um i think that makes sense right because if your training images is 28 by 28 pixels then the test images should be also 28 by 28 right um otherwise uh I don't think the 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 function. I think the functions. Uh, uh, I think it's gonna uh, uh, fail miserably. Just just to be honest, I think because um, yeah, this is a computer. Isn't it's not it's not like human, right? So probably for a human, you you can you can like tell them okay, if it's twenty eight by twenty, you can see a cat, right? And then you, when you test it, you can put like a blown up cat, like a, I don't know, a big giant poster, which is like 10,000 by 10,000 pixel. Probably your student can recognize it, but not for computer. Sorry. Um, I might be wrong, but in this case, the shape is the same. Uh, the test shape is the same as the training uh, 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 shape, which is 28 by 28. Right. So it's the test label. The test label has to be the same as the test, right? Otherwise, it doesn't match. Then some of them would not would have no labels, right? So that thing is not going to work, I think. All right. If you want to see uh, the array, just for test images number one. So this is the basically the 28 by 28 pixel, right? So if you can see here, like, say one, two, right? Let's count it together. Two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen right and then twenty six right and then twenty seven and twenty eight right so that's those are like the the first twenty eight pixels and then you have uh twenty eight um twenty eight to the bottom twenty eight uh rows so one two three right. oh sorry four yeah until 28 to the bottom here right and if you can see the value is between zero to 
255, yeah? So this is until 253, but yeah, this is the closest, 253. Uh, 253 is the probably the brightest over here. You don't see 255 here. No. Right? <coughs> okay. And then um, let's say the test label. Um, so this is the test label. So apparently. Um, Number one is seven. I wonder if you can, um, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it, let's see. Okay. Oh, another tip is you can press tap to see all the functions. So you, you press dot and then tap, right? And then you can see all the functions that you can use um i don't know if you can see is there a show um of oh, what view let's say let's say one i like guess No, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Let's see, you can press uh, put question mark to, to know like what is the um, the parameters. Yeah, it's not it's not like that. Um, I don't know. There's nothing here. What can you use to see all any base juice clip compress data dump image probably? Let's see. I can do this at all end. Mm. Shit. Buffer optional stats. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't show anything. I don't know. That's images. Yeah, it doesn't show. I want to see. Um, yeah, I want to see. I don't know. Doesn't want to see. 
Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> there is number seven. Okay. There is number seven. Uh, this image is. Let's see. Um, this image is to show image. and grass <clears throat> this images you oh Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> hmm, plot M show image. Okay, you can do this, plot M show image. Let's try that. Let's try this. Not define, okay. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, import matplotlib. Come on, make it work, make it work, make it work. Oops. Oh. There we go. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Wait. Two? Oh, oh, it should be one. Should be one. One. Okay. There you go. So, see? Yes! Woohoo! Okay. So you can see it's number seven, right? <clears throat> okay, guys, I, I need to. F uh, it's been a long time doing this. Okay. So now we kind of like get a feeling about the data. Okay, let's go to the next step. We're almost almost done. So our workflow will be as follows. First, we will represent our neural network with the training data. Okay. Remember, we are a teacher, so we have to give our students a bunch of training data, right? Uh, not just training data, but also tell them what it is, which is the label, right? So train images and trainable. And then the network will then learn to associate images and label. Remember, learn is just basically getting the right parameters. In this, in this, in this case, is because it's a universal approximation function, there's a lot of parameters. It's not just uh, think about linear linear function y equals to mx plus p, but times one million, you know, or, or times ten thousand or times hundred thousand. So it's gonna be like hundred thousand or thousands of parameters to learn for the network. Just to just to learn those m and b, that's it. But because there's a million of m and b's, it's gonna be complicated right so and computer are really 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 good and that 
and and that's that's that is the reason also we are using a GPU, which is a graphical processing unit, and because when the computer learns, <coughs> basically it's using uh, parallel uh, processing. That's what GPU is uh, good for, because it's basically learning parallel. Parallel parallel means you're not just learning one by one, but you're 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 putting a bunch of uh, that's why we're using NumPy or linear algebra because we're pushing, putting a lot of parameters or numbers into an array. Remember, into a list, like probably like one one list could be like hundred numbers, and then boom, uh, sequentially like put it put it into into the uh, to the computer, and the computer will crunch all those hundred parameters all at once, like try to compute it all at once instead of one by one, but parallel uh, learning. That's why. Um, um, GPU is very popular for deep learning because otherwise if you use CPU then you're learning like the parameters are like one by one you know then imagine if you have like a one million parameters you have to like one million and then you have to like what like a queue it in line like one million that's gonna be a long time but if you put it like in a list let's say if you put, have one million but you put in a list let's say hundred thousand in a list in a in, in, in just in one lump and then you just boom 100,000 then you all, you only need to fit the the computer 10 times because in one list there's 100,000 right so you put uh, 100,000 times 10 it's already like 1 million instead of just uh 1 million in line right so see it, it, it's tremendously very very fast very very fast that's what gpu is for right <clears throat> okay um where are we now where are we now? Okay, okay. I'm just gonna run this the test label, right? Okay. So we are. Oh, where am I? I lost my train of thought. Sorry, guys. Uh, we will ask the network to produce prediction. Okay. So, um, so once we put the training images and training label, right? And then, uh, so the the computer or the deep learning, uh algorithm will will get the right parameters because we will learn it right and then one once we got the right parameters we have to test it right we have to test the student if you ever have been a student in a school you got all those tests what sat gmat gre what nwea what else uh TOEFL scores what have you right before we can even deploy to the real world, right? Because this is so important because it's affecting a lot of people, right? Just imagine you're using Google, right? Or using Facebook or using uh, Apple or using uh, what? Uh, another big company is Amazon. How many people do you think using uh, Google? Like Android? Android? Android has like, I don't know, like 1 billion or no, no, just Apple has 1 billion smartphone, right? I think Android has like two times three times three three four billions and all all of those some of the softwares inside those uh, apple or google or facebook they're using this uh artificial intelligence or deep learning and it's affecting a lot of people right so so you have to be damn 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 sure that your algorithm this deep learning this universal approximation function really fine-tuned really works before even you began to deploy it in the real world. So you want to test it, right? Don't even think about it if you don't test it. You're gonna, you're gonna like, oh, somebody's gonna go to your neck and it's gonna squeeze your neck. Because that's how much responsible you are as a deep learning practitioner, right? How much responsible you are as an artificial intelligent practitioner. How much responsible you are as a machine learning practitioner many of the trajectory of the peoples that uses uh, your algorithm will be changed will be some way some way interjected because of the algorithm that they use in their daily life right just for example if your algorithm giving giving uh, uh, the people that uses it a wrong prediction and then that person fully trusts that, right? And just follow the wrong decision. It will impact that person's life. Can you imagine that? And not just one person. Could be one million. Could be 10 million. Could be 100 million. 
so this is why deep learning is one of the most important like technology if you heard about andrew ng he's one of the famous uh, machine learning like enthusiast or researcher he's one is a professor in stanford he says basically deep learning or machine learning or I think artificial intelligence is like the new electricity because you know electricity we all use electricity we cannot run away from electricity well unless if you want to become like a i don't know go back to a hundred years uh you know <laughs> or 200 years ago or three one thousand years ago right living with just a candle right sin but no right we we live in this modern world we enjoy it right we enjoy electricity without electricity we are like just like a caveman probably i don't know we're just like gathering stone and then just like making fire with the stone oh, it's hard work you couldn't imagine how hard work is so anyway anyway i'm just giving you trying to give you like a uh like a uh, why why do you have to learn this thing because this technology is just so important you know affecting a lot of people right you have a great responsibility to make this work right who said that like spider-man right with great power comes great responsibility that's who you are that's why you're listening to this right you got this but you have to test it you have to be damn 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 like a million damn sure before you deploy that algorithm to the real world because it's gonna affect it later probably in in this uh, or you have heard about you know some machine learning algorithm are biased right well the reason is biased because the training data normally the training data that they, they're given are not diverse so for example you want to um, predict like if the person are happy or not but all of your training data because many of the computer are being used i think more more especially in the u.s probably just white people normally like i don't know 80 percent 90 percent so a lot of the training data are like just white people instead of like brown or yellow or, or 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 red people you know so you have to be make sure that the data are diverse that's one of the really really key thing right before even if you even even train it you have to know like damn sure you have to consult probably with other practitioners you have to consult from other people like is my training diverse if not what can you do about it right because you cannot just train uh, uh, uh deep learning if your images are not diverse then it's going to be making a lot of harm than good right to the world so yes so that's that's the responsibility okay so we need to put the the function that we already predicted the the parameters that already predicted the universal approximation functions from deep learning to the test before we deploy it into the real world all right capish okay now let's build the network again remember that you are not supposed to understand everything about this example just yet but i already explained a lot of things because i think it's already what more than one hour oh my gosh it's one hour 20 minutes okay okay i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna just keep quiet right now i'm just shut up right i'm just gonna boom right boom 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 right otherwise you're gonna probably fall asleep okay so from cross import models and from cross import layers right so just take it as this again i'm not gonna explain this because if i explain this it's gonna take more or less, i don't know more than two hours right <clears throat> but but basically the model is like the the architectures and the layers is like the number of layers kind of right uh, so now the models is a sequ sequential is an again it's a type of model that uh, in deep learning, there's many different kind of model, sequential, uh, recurrent neural network, and so all that stuff. But now it's just sequential, right? And then the layers are dense. Dense just means that the, so we're talking about neural network here, right? Basically uh, a network that are base uh, inspired by the human brain, right? There's neurons, 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 neurons everywhere, probably like, uh, and each of the neurons are, are, are being like a group into one layer. Uh, it's another neurons are being grouped to another uh, second layer and so on, right? Um, 
do you want to go into this no right i think i think it's going to be because i can explain this to you and it's going to take okay anyway okay anyway forget about that okay whatever um <clears throat> so we have uh tens basically uh all of the neurons like uh on the next layer is connected to the neurons on the previous layer that's what tens is because the, the it's just the connection is just is so many connection it's all interconnected on every neurons kind of right uh we're using an activation okay activation <laughs> just take it as is right now okay if you're new to deep learning you're thinking what is activation functions right uh, but basically it's to uh okay i'll just uh, try to make it as concise as possible so um remember the y mx plus b right because that's basically a one neuron this it's just a linear function so the y is the output right the x is the input right yeah so think think about that very simple linear function, right? Very simple deep neural network kind of just one neurons. Kind of. So once you get the y, right? And once you, and then and then and then you learn the parameters, right? You you got the x, right? And the y is kind of like a, a linear, right? The proportion because it's a linear function. But at it, it as it turns out, because a deep neural network is a universal approximation function, it's universal. So imagine if it's a linear, linear, right? But in the real world, is if you're trying to classify like images of cat, images of a dog, deciding, probably deciding is a linear thing. But what I'm trying to say is, it's non-linear. That's what I can say. The simplest way. Many of the uh, 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 decisions that we have to make are uh, just classification of problems like, uh, that are intuitive for human to to know or to decide. Oh, that's a jacket. That's a thermos. Oh, that's a dog. Oh, that's a crazy person. Oh, that's a mad person. Oh, that's an angry person. Those are non-linear decision. So, in order to make a non-linear, in other words, in order to make it a universal function, it's not just a linear function. Because if it's a linear, it cannot become universal by definition because it's just linear you know everything you give you give an input then the output will be will always become proportional right that's what linear is it's a line right you cannot like tweak it like make it curvy you know you cannot become flexible and that's not the real world the real world is messy right it's messy it's non-linear just remember that right now i'm talking about my friend's action here so so in order to make it non-linear from linear, remember uh, the the core fundamental neurons in the deep neural network are linear. It's y equals to mx plus b. But to make it non-linear, to make it universal, you have to activate it. That's the way you remember it. You have to activate it. The activation function is just to make it non-linear. And one of the fam most famous activation function, at least the one I know. It's called ReLU. It's, it stands for, I think, Rectified, Rectified Linear Unit. All right. Okay. And then the input shape is defined to 28 by 28. We already discussed this before. And then the last layer, okay, the uh, the layer, uh, so there's there's many layers in deep neural network. The last layer uh, is only 10 neurons. I think this is what it says. Only 10 uh, neurons. And then the activation is a softmax. Because the last layer is trying to decide or trying to classify what are the handwritten digits. Whether it's from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's multi-classification. It's not just a binary classification. Binary classification means if it's a dog or not dog. If it's a hot dog or not hot dog. You see the Silicon Valley uh, uh, miniseries. Anyway, so there's a multiple classification. So in multiple classification, you use a special activation function. It's called softmax. And we can discuss this softmax in a deeper, just one session, probably just for two hours. But you don't have to know about this. All you need to know, just use softmax. I know, I know, 
you know my brain is like an engineer i want to know everything underneath but uh, at this point sometimes okay whatever works works okay just 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 stick the fit you know fit take it by fit just believe in it uh, uh. just take it okay so we'll 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 run this thing okay so we already run it okay so we already built now the network with a nice architecture nice activation functions uh nice layers or all dense whatever oh i'm so tired okay so the the core building block of neural network is the layer blah 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 data processing module which can conceive as a filter uh, some data comes in and comes out in a more useful form form precisely layer extract representations out of the data fed into them hopefully representations that are more meaningful for the problem at hand most of deep learning blah 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 consists of chaining together simple layers which will implement a form uh, progress that okay that's uh, okay okay you can you can read all of this on your own okay uh, here our network consists of sequence of two dense layer which are densely connected also called fully connected neural la neural net layers the second last layer is a 10 way softmax layer which means it will return a, a 10 array an array of 10 probability scores summing to one okay that's more like the technical definition of what is a softmax okay very uh, short uh, uh, concise its score will be the probability that current digit event belongs to one of our 10 digits okay so it, it, it's, it's summing to one, the probability. So if it, if it recognizes, it's, oh, this is, this is I think, handwritten uh, nine. So it will put nine, let's say probably 0 0.9, right? And then and then the rest is like just 0 0.05, very low probability, something like that. So to make our network ready for training, we need to pick three more things as part of compilation step. First, a loss function okay this is how the network will be able to measure how good the job is doing on this training data right so a loss function if you remember uh, we talk about how to minimize the error that's what basically how you learn how to adjust the parameter right when you're adjusting the parameter basically you're trying to minimize the loss right the error and then an optimizer, this is a mechanism through which the network will update itself based on its data sees at its loss factor. And the matrix, the main point uh, based on accuracy and the fraction of the images that were correctly classified. Okay, guys, so don't worry about all of this. I'm already having um, <laughs> my, my brain juice is already like uh, exhausted kind of. <laughs> This human talking and uh, just trying to explain this stuff here. Um, we we will we'll, we'll go through this again. You know, I'm, I'm sure you you'll, you'll find it in another YouTube session, or I'm sure you you find it you, you can re-listen this this YouTube again, or listen another of my YouTube uh, uh, um, session, and and you'll you'll get it. Right? You'll get this. Don't worry about it. It, it just needs a repetition, right? And a different point of view, right? So if you don't understand it, don't worry about it. It's just me. I'm I'm not explaining really clearly, but I'm just trying to explain as 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 clearly as lay uh, man uh, lay person as possible, so you can understand it. But if you don't understand, it, still no big deal, no big deal. Okay. So the exact purpose of the loss function and optimization will be made clear throughout the next two chapters. Okay. Okay. So this is how we define. The, the 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 optimizer the loss the matrix so we are using rms prop uh, the loss function we use categorical cross entropy and the matrix accuracy okay uh, and then we run this okay now before training we'll process our data by reshaping it into the shape that the network expects and scaling it so that all values are zero to one okay so this is called normalization because remember the, the value is from 0 to 255 right in array of okay and then we we'll, the value is 0 to we transform into float 32 array of shape from 0 to 1 okay so this is this uh 
process is called normalization. So you put train images dot reshape 60,028 and then uh, put it on the train images, right? And then it's just uh, th change type uh, float 32 divided by 255. Why divided by 255? Because you want the value from 0 to 1, right? So you have to divide by 255. The same thing you did for the test images. You reshape it first, right? And then you change the type, right? And then you normalize it, right? Okay. Okay. Let's run this. Right. And from Keras, are we almost done? Okay, almost done. Okay. So we also need to categorically encode the labels, a step which we explained in chapter three. Okay. For now, just take it in first. We'll go through this one by one. So import to categorical from cross utility. Okay. Because we need to encode the label at the end. Right. Train label and test label. Okay. We are now ready to train the network. Uh, I just want to see what is train label right now. Let's see. Oh, that's what it looks like. Okay. Hmm. How about over here? Let me see over here. Uh, I just want to see the difference. Oh, it's like this. So from like this into like this. Okay. Hmm. So just one zero one zero. So so what if what if I wanna let's say show me show me number. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, ten. Hmm. This is interesting. This is a different shape. Okay. I think it's just uh, encoding differences. Okay. All right. Anyway, it's going to be, um, yeah. It's going to be explain a detail why he did, did do it. So th this is what I'm talking about, you know, in, in, in determining, um, it's not just putting the, 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 the training data or the, the training label, uh, the test data and the test label, just put in the algorithm, but you are dealing more about how to reformatting and pre-processing the data. So just ready to be fed into the network. And that's normally takes a longer time, you know, to clean the data and so on, to, to understand whether the data is not biased. Yeah. Before you even put it. Yeah. So there's a lot of like a, I would say pre, pre work, pre prep about the data itself before you can like put it into the network. Okay. So now we are ready to train our network. Yay. Finally, after, after one hour, three, four minutes. Okay. So we call fit method into the network. We fit the model into the train data. So network dot fit. So we put the train images. Trainable epoch is the number five is the number of time you you fit in the data. So one epoch one it just you put it one time. That's it. So the idea if um, the more the more you put in basically up to a point. Okay, the more you put in the 
the, 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 the parameters that going to be learned. Remember, it's learning like a lot of parameters, probably like 100,000, a million parameters for the universal approximate functions are going to be better and better because the error is going to be minimized and minimized, right? So, and then batch size is 128. I think this one has to do with, uh, so you're not just, <clears throat> this is, this is basically to 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 uh, to to minimize expenses because uh, training a network is expensive. Um, so instead of updating the uh, updating the parameters on every <coughs> excuse me every time you fit in a data. Right. For example, you have like a I don't know this. In this case, you have sixty thousand training images, right? So instead of updating the parameters every time you fit in, that means you have to update it sixty thousand times. I think you updated uh, one hundred twenty-eight times. Sorry, hundred every hundred twenty-eight because you're 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 putting uh, like uh, one hundred twenty-eight images in in one batch. So you kind of like cheating, you know. To, to 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 save money so it, it's like a I don't know I, I don't know probably this is a bad example if you have a car this this the thing that I can think if you have a car instead of like uh, driving a person like you know one by one to the same school let's say you're driving your your kids to the same school like if you have four kids instead of like driving one by one you just put all four kids into one car right and then you just drive there so you save kind of something like that probably it's not a good analogy whatever okay so we, we're gonna train this boom oh error oh man I don't know why hmm Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's go back to the beginning. I don't know why is it error. Just just do it there. Sometimes yeah, it's a bit iffy here. Sometimes I I I did something like I want to to test it and then yeah, and then I I go back to the beginning. I think it it screw up the whole thing. So um, let's just do this. So this is a nice thing is just pressing shift enter shift enter. Now it seems to work. Cross my finger. Cross my finger. Yep. Yes, it's working. It's training five epoch, so you can see here it's like sixty thousand data, right? The first epoch, it takes five seconds. It gives you a loss of 0.25 accuracy in ninety two. The second epoch, right? The same thing, sixty thousand data, three seconds. It's faster, slightly faster. The loss goes down significantly, 0.1, and then the accuracy is also gone up ninety six. And then and then going up again 98 and then 98 47 and then 98.92 and then that's where we stop you can you can actually like um, um, play with this you can put like 7 C if it's like better you know in this case because the, 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 the training uh, time is like fast so you can like you know just play around with the parameters yeah that's that's what I'm giving you a suggestion just just play around you know just what what is the input? What is the output? Well, input, output. So that's how you get to learn fast. This is a lot of, uh, I would say deep learning is very ex experimental too. It's very, a lot of uh, trial and error. And then the nice thing about deep learning, guys, the nice thing about deep learning is not all of, all of it is like science. It's like hard science. Some of it is more like uh, intuitive, more, more like an art. 
more like a, I don't know, like a dumb way to do it. You know, you don't have to be like smarty, smarty as like a hardcore, like computer science or a, I don't know, rocket scientist. Some, some of it's like art, art. You, you kind of intuitive know, oh, if I do this, do this, or even like I change the network, if I decrease the layers, if I put the different kind of neurons instead of a, like a sequential, but I put a recurrent, you know, uh, instead of the architecture, if I put some neurons over here, some neurons over here, you know. So, it's a dark art. That's what they call it. Anyway, that's another topic again. So, so you can see, right? So, we have Epoch 7. So, you can see 9912, 99.4. Uh, <clears throat> so, if... If you if you remember the f the first time we we uh, trained it it was ninety five, right? And then we we ran this the second time actually the, the training the the dot fit. So if you can see it's not ninety five the the first epoch it's already ninety nine. So I think in this at this stage actually the the parameters already learned from the last time. So this just adding on top of that. You know, if you know what I meant, right? So it's still increasing ninety nine four ninety nine five ninety nine six seven eight and eight five right so you keep on increasing so okay and you can see the loss also decreasing keep on decreasing okay so see what's next two quantities are being displayed during the training the loss of the network over the training data and the accuracy of the network over the training data we quickly reach an accuracy of 0.989 okay but we didn't we didn't do it because we we did it like two times now in and it's even better now let's check that our model performs well on the test too okay remember you have to test it before you even deploy it because you are so responsible and this is affecting a lot of people's right life right so don't don't take it lightly this is as a deep learning practitioner you are how do i say it? you are a very important person but don't make your big, uh, you don't make your head big, okay? You have to be humble, right? You're given that as a responsibility, you have to take it, um, don't take it lightly, right? You have to be responsible. Anyway, okay, so we are going to test the loss, right? So you put the test images and test label, <clears throat> right? So we're done with that, with 10,000. That's only take one second, that's surprisingly. And then we're going to print it. So the test accuracy, according to this, is 98. How about I want to print the loss accuracy? Can I do that? Uh, I should be able to do that. Test loss. Boom. Okay. So it's slightly less, right? So if you if you compare, it's 99. So the test accuracy is slightly less, you know, by 0.01%. How about the loss one? Because that's the accuracy. It's 0 0.078, right? This one is 0 0.056. So in the later section, there's a um, term we call overfitting. Uh, that itself, that topic, could be like, I don't know, two hours or even like, I don't know, a lot of session to be discussed. But overfitting just means if the, the your, your test loss accuracy is, 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 is higher than your, uh, your training loss accuracy. The idea is, just imagine you have a function, right? You already train it, right? And during the training, it works well, right? So that means your, your parameter is like, nicely tweak the, uh, the 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 deep learning found the parameters or whatever if it's like one million hundred thousand right but during the test it turns out uh it's not so well it it predicts it more error than than you think it is so that means in the deep learning world you can say that your model is overfit because it's just good on the training data, but once you deploy it in the real world, it's not so good as you think it is. Right? There is, there is a, like a, a lot of discussion, like 
how like how good and how bad you can like tolerate right but but basically it is if it if it's like the 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 the, 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 the once after you test it it's kind of like worse than worse than the training then your model overfits but if it's once you test it um your model is better then they call it underfitting right that means your your model is too I don't know, too general? No, I don't know. Anyway, that's another topic. Okay, so anyway, we are successfully, right? Okay, our test set accuracy turned out to be 97.8. Okay, that's quite a bit lower than the training set. This gap between training accuracy and training is an example of overfitting. The fact that machine learning models tend to perform worse on new data than on, the train, on their training data. Overfitting will be the central topic of chapter three. Okay, nice. This concludes our very first example. You saw how we could build and train a neural network to classify handwritten digits less than 20 lines pattern code. In next, we will go detail over every moving piece we just previewed and clarify what is really going on behind the scenes. We will learn about tensors, but I just explained to you kind of like what is behind the scenes. Okay. So probably in the next chapter, it will be so much easier for you to learn. Okay. Hopefully you will learn about tensors. It's basically it's just a list of numbers. That's what tensor is, right? The data storing objects going into the network, tensor operations, which layers are made of, and gradient design. That's basically the algorithm to minimize a function. Okay. Uh, okay. So, all right. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, almost like <laughs> two hours. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.